In today's episode, we are going to see how to convert simple data in Excel or any other database for that matter into 3D maps using Excel itself. You don't need any special software. You don't need lat longs or any complicated stuff. You just need names of locations. So let's see how this is done. So let's look at the data first. I have some data here. Simple Excel data. So what we have here is city, country, date, month, year, card type and some amount. Now usually we see a pivot table or some kind of regular reports or charts but most of us have never plotted our own data in a map and that's why the geographical dimension of how our work is happening is completely lost on us. So I'll show you how easy it is to manage this. All that you have to do is make sure the data is clean. Make a table out of it. Insert table. Each column must have a heading. No merge cells. That's all. Now you click on the insert button. Probably you have gone to insert charts many times. There is a map here, but don't use that. The next one is the 3D map. Click on the 3D map. And first time you do it is just going to open a separate window and plot something. It actually shows you a globe which you can rotate like this. Just drag with the mouse. It's 3D. Now what has it done? Let's see. In my data, there were two columns one containing city and one containing country. Now the moment I add a map, it just adds a text box here to indicate that 3D map is available in this Excel file. So I'm just going to delete that text box. So notice I had a column called country and city. It picked up those columns automatically. It checked whether the column actually contains valid names of cities and countries and it automatically added them here. So when I'm doing that, it has added the country and city like this. City and country. Right now it is showing cities. If I click on countries, it will plot countries like that. Now, what has it done? It has just plotted something. We want to see the names as well. How do we do that? So you go to map labels. So it will actually put labels. You can go to any level of depth it's a big map so lowest level of uh, items or roads or locations can be found if you want to go to a particular location you can click on find location let's say gateway of india it'll actually zoom in and take you there now which type of map you want to see is also up to you so what do you do you choose different themes. So this is a road map, default theme. You can also have satellite and multiple color combinations. So this is a grayed out version and so on. So we will use the default theme right now. Now what it has already done is it has plotted all my data on top of it. And we can see wherever there is a country there is some dot which has come in. But we want to add our own numbers on it. Which number do we have? We have amount. How do we do that? So look at this. The first item here is the location. Now after location, you see something called height. What does height mean? Because it's a, because it's a 3D map, a bar chart has a height. Open this and then you can choose whatever numeric item you want to put. So I put amount. So now what happened? It actually created a chart with this. It is actually showing me a bar chart. Now let's zoom out and see how it looks. So this is now an interactive globe showing me data across cities and countries. Actually right now countries, if I click on city, the same data will be plotted by city. 
Now, if you want to zoom in, you zoom in like this. But the problem is, even if you zoom in, this is a 3D bar chart. So it's like you're flying in the air and you are not even aware of where exactly which bar is and you can't appreciate the height of each bar. That's the problem. So what do you do? Now, if you notice any map, any map, Google map, BIM map, any, any interactive map always has a zoom in and zoom out button. We are aware of that. But this one has these four buttons. These are tilt up, tilt down, rotate, right and left. So if you tilt it, now you can probably appreciate it better. So again, it's still interactive, but now we can compare things in a more effective manner. So that's beautiful. Having said that, what else can we do? So let me change the data and let's draw another map which is more dense so that you can look at some other features. So I'm going to take a map which contains lots of cities from India. I have lots of cities and similar data. So you know the story now, you go to insert 3D map. I already have a map. If you already have a map, it will show you a tour. It's called a tour. I'll tell you why. We'll say new tour. Again, it will do the same thing. In this case, I want something with higher density plots. So enable map labels. It has plotted a lot of cities and you want to show something there. Now, this is good. We can zoom in, we can rotate and so on. All good. If you want to interactively rotate and you are getting irritated with clicking these buttons every now and then, press the Alt key, keep pressing the Alt key and just free rotate with mouse drag. That's more convenient. Now, we are showing only the amount and city. What if we want to show something else? For example, we have type of card which was used by person. So I want to show card type. That is category. When I click on category, Notice what happens, it becomes a stacked bar chart. Why did it happen this way? Because I have various types of card, gold, platinum, silver, like that. Four types of cards. Now, which color is what? That is shown by legend. If you want, you keep it, you can resize it or delete it. Now, the problem here is this is good. But uh, if you closely look at these things, what is happening here? If two particular colors are very similar or similar in height, it's difficult to understand which one is smaller or bigger. So we can change the type of plot. This is a standard stack bar chart. If you want, you can change it to this type. So let's see how that affects it. This is stacked on top of each other. This will be side by side. So it's much easier for us to understand what is happening. Other option is pie chart, but pie chart is flat. So in that case, you will have to change the elevation so that you can appreciate individual pie charts. Now, there is another thing here called heat map, which is very useful. But for heat map to be understood by people, you need to show the legend. So what is this trying to show you right now? This is the heat map color code. So how do you interpret a particular heat map? The dark blue is 1800 and 33,000 is orange. So you look at a bur bubble which you see there, for example, this one. And uh, in that bubble, you see what is the center most item and then try to compare it here, something like that. But that's a little difficult thing for people to understand. So outermost is blue, so we are somewhere here, and innermost is green, so it's somewhere here. If it is like this, that means this value is much higher because it's coming here. Now, if you want to see this on a larger picture, what you should do is a very nice thing which you may not notice up front. Now, when I zoom out, and let's do it like this for entire India. Now, when I go to layer options, I can change the radius of influence like this and also the color scale percentage. And then what can happen? This is a static map. And to show what happens, I actually need to 
put the time dimension. So before we go ahead, I'm going to go back to a standard bar chart, show you the time dimension, and then we'll come to the color scale. So what does time dimension mean? Time means I have data and there is a date. There could have been time as well. In this case, only date. So if I sort it on the date here, what is happening here? The earliest date I have is 11-10. 2017 and the last date I have is 2020 so it's around three years data now what is happening is each transaction is happening somewhere where that city whichever city now I want to see how my business happened across three years visually plotted on a map in an animated manner beautiful how do we do that so there is a time field here this will only show you date time type of column. So it's showing you only one column right now. The moment you say date, nothing seems to have changed, but actually it did show some date, which is this date. If you notice, this is the last date available in our data. So it's saying as on this date, this is what is happening. So let's make this date a little bigger so that we can appreciate what's happening here. And let's change the format so that only the date portion is visible. So now we can see the date clearly. And why am I doing this? Let's see. At the bottom, you see something like a scroll bar, right? And you see something here. So now there is a play button. Now the moment I say play button, notice it's starting at the first date. The moment I click on the play button, what's going to happen? This is called a scene. And in 10 seconds, it's going to traverse through every row in my data there are i don't know how many rows let's see how many rows do we have 1500 rows it's going to go through each row ascending order of date look at which area is in the picture for example on this date four transactions happened here so it's already plotted them it will go to the next row find which location add it there if there is already a plot it will increase the height all that it is going to do for 1500 rows in 10 seconds so let's see all that you have to do is click on the play button here and look at the impact it's actually going through day by day and showing me how my business changed and while this is happening i can also do this i can pause it let me show you again so this is how it happened let's add a category and see how it happens and let's do it side by side maybe you can see it even more greater detail and we will zoom in this time somewhere here and see what happens if you want you can move to the beginning and then see the overall impact like this you can change the speed you can change the way in which this is plotted you can even pause it at a given point of time but even if this happens it's difficult to understand so let's say on a particular day i did a promotion and i want to see the impact so this is like a scrub tool. You can take it to any day and then zoom in on the area of interest and then you can move it at a speed which is convenient to you and actually see did it have an impact. This is absolutely outstanding. This is available for at least eight, nine years and hardly any people know how to use it properly. So that's how this is done. Now another thing, suppose I have a lot of data to show and I don't want to show just all India like this because to appreciate all this in such a high density graph, it is going to be difficult. So can I do some kind of storytelling and show it step by step? If this was PowerPoint, maybe I have four regions. So I would have shown South first, then I would have shown North, then East and finally all India. So can I do something like that? Yes, you can. So remember this thing on the left side is called a scene. It's like a slide. Now each scene has certain properties. One is the time or how long it is going to be shown. So I'm going to reduce the time because we are just showing a demo. Now in this per first scene, I want to show south. So I just brought south only in this area. I can give it a name, but that's okay. Now I, there is a transition as well. So I'll also go put five seconds for transition there are very nice transitions these transitions are basically camera movements so it will just circle around that area 
it looks nice now this is south i want to add a new scene and show north so click on new scene it will just copy the previous scene this we will use dolly which is like a pan camera effect but this time i want to show something different so this time i am showing north and i could have done that for two more regions if i wanted to but to save time i am going to add one more scene and in this scene we want to show all india and because it's all india i want to show something like a entire globe rotating so now we have three slides or three visuals so to say fine so the last india one i want to zoom out so the entire india is seen and it's going to rotate like this so i have put it in a corner here we can adjust all that so now i have three scenes or slides and i have set what happens in each slide and now when you click on the play button see what happens now it went to south it's using the circle effect showed it for 5 seconds now it's going to fly to north even if it was from india to canada it would have flown and then this is the dolly or pan effect and then it's zooming out again to show entire india and once that is done this is the rotate globe effect so this is how you use 3d map now as though this was not enough what else can you do maybe you like this you can control the speed or the quality you go to options and say high quality make sure this happens if if you are presenting it to someone just before the presentation do it once and check it yourself so that the data gets cached and it's even faster and higher quality but suppose you want to share this with someone who does not have this version of excel then what do you do so that has also been thought of what do you do you just click on create video and it allows you to create a nice video if you want you can later on put music also behind it or use some editor to narrate your presentation later actually speaking you can put it in powerpoint use the powerpoint narration feature and do that as well so lot of very very useful things happening here now the last thing i want to show you i know i'm beyond time but this is one last thing i would like to show is whatever we are showing right now is not just limited to a globe another problem is if this was international data half the globe would never be seen so there is a flat map version also so it just flattens the map but it's still 3d in the sense i can still tilt it pan it and do whatever i want exactly the same way as we saw earlier that's number 1 another thing you can do is take a custom map so you have map of your farmland or uh, area where you are building something or your shop floor where machines are located uh, engineering drawing of that area and then you can plot the xy coordinates and then put your data on top of it as an example of that this is the map of uh, bombay airport this is just a 2d map it is not even a map it just a picture so now this is paint brush when i move the cursor you can see that there is a location at the bottom 190 so if i say i want to show this gate this gate is 1325 comma 855 x and y coordinates so you get your image identify areas of interest by using simple x and y coordinates and then using those coordinates you can create excel data like this so now here i have plotted these gates so i have plotted this gate this is 1000 1000 something like that so these are different gates x and y axis and on this date how many customers or passengers got down or how many flights came or something like that so let's say 23 flights came on this day and something like that so now using this we can actually create a map animated the way i have already shown you and this is how it would look so let me play it from the beginning so you are not limited to a particular globe you can use your own map so notice the date is changing and it's showing you how many flights came and went from each gate so imagination is the limit for doing this and just as the last item this is data from insurance company this is real accident data in india 
you can see the height of the bar indicates number of accidents in that spot. So if you have lat longs, you can directly plot them like this. You will see that some states don't seem to have accidents. That's not true. I didn't have data for those states. So imagine the utility of this feature. Amazing stuff. Nobody knows it. Even if you know it, you have not explored it fully. And of course, it supports more things like multiple layers and so on. But what I strongly suggest is don't just get wowed by it, clap and go home. The best practice is to make sure that whenever you have data which contains any type of locational information, it is in your interest to draw a 3D map. And what do I mean by locational information? All of these. All of these means lat longs, XY coordinates I already showed you. Then city, country, region, state, even pin codes, it understands very well, full address. And if you have KML or SFP files, which are typically used in GIS kind of situations, you can use those as well. So really, really powerful stuff. Use it to your advantage. Don't wait for someone to ask you to show a report like this. Nobody is going to ask you because nobody knows. You use it, show the value to people, and if possible, make a standard operating procedure for your organization, which says if you have locational data, plot it on a map, and you will learn something about your own familiar data which you have never noticed because you never saw it on a map. So it directly helps you manage your business or work more effectively. So with that, we are going to end today's session. See you tomorrow. Thank you.